Today in the crypto space, we see the market looking strong. Bitcoin at about 57,000, up approximately 5%. Ethereum doing pretty good as well, up approximately 2% at $3,200. The rest of the crypto space, the altcoins, there's some good gainers here. Doge, XRP finally waking up, Sheep, and many others. In today's video, I want to talk about the general market. I want to use Bitcoin as a leading indicator, but more importantly, I want to talk about one project, one altcoin that has been showing a bit of strength and potentially looking for that breakout, and it's called Arweave. So you know what? Let's talk about the news, let's analyze the charts, and let's strategize to capitalize. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and let's get right into it guys. If you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome on the channel. We talk about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum and all the altcoins looking for opportunities, whether we go up or down, bearish or bullish, it doesn't matter. All we want to do is stay one step ahead of the market so that we can capitalize on any of the volatility. And if you appreciate that strategy, subscribe to the channel, click that bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos, including the live streams at 730 Eastern, where we talk about crypto news and price action. Guys, if you have any projects you want me to cover here on the channel feel free to let me know in the comment section below you can hit me up on the socials the links are in the description better yet join the discord the discord is where it's at lots of good alpha trade setups fundamentals and learning material and the best part is it's absolutely free all right guys let's see what's going on here with the top 100 just to give us an idea of what the market is looking like we see the market cap doing pretty good a little bit of a hesitation maybe a bit of uh, a bit of a rollover here me meaning that we could get a market-wide you know retracement here however guys still the market's still looking very strong bitcoin up five percent in the last 24 hours ten percent in the last seven days ethereum doing pretty good as well nine percent in the last seven days in the last 24 hours only two and a half percent but still showing a lot of strength here carrying some of these altcoins to higher levels a lot of the altcoins are definitely outperforming bitcoin regardless of what the bitcoin dominance is saying so one thing that we have to keep in mind is getting into the right altcoins will keep you competitive against bitcoin Bitcoin is running, no doubt, but even XRP today is doing pretty good. Solana, not so much, taking a bit of a dip here. We have uh, AVAX, not so much either, kind of going sideways after a nice little run in the last couple of days. And Cardano, the same thing, hesitating. But we have Dogecoin waking up, up 12%, guys, doing pretty good. Um, you know, buying those bottom ranges. I accumulated into Doge a while back, maybe a bit too early, but it's okay. You hold because you never know what's happening, right? with doge with elon with with um you know x if there's any adoption there any utility that uh, uh, is brought to dogecoin we could definitely see dogecoin run so dogecoin right now in my opinion is just going good um getting into fresh longs is a bit dangerous especially when you see these parabolic you know runs like this 12 percent in 24 hours is significant so keep in mind the risk okay let's continue going down here we have some good gainers some of them going sideways uniswap going sideways after its nice rally sheep waking up 13 and a half percent both sheep and doge are doing really good so you know the dog coins doing pretty great is, is a nice indication but you know i don't think meme coin season is um here yet meme coin season usually is the last narrative to run based on my experience of course um it doesn't have to happen like that you know the market is right now really really hot right now so it could be that people are taking profits and trying to front run the uh, the uh, meme coin season when we do get one you know we'll see some good good price action but as of now it's a bit dangerous to get into a uh, mean coin so be careful there buy bottoms as best as you can stacks getting a bit of a dip here of course um you know bitcoin narrative has definitely brought stacks to higher levels and breathers to the downside are very healthy and we can see the market is still looking good guys no, look at injective look at stellar xlm um even sideways is decent you know holding steady while bitcoin takes its you know turn and does its thing um and the dominance goes into the bitcoin favor we can see at best see all coins go sideways uh cro is waking up a little bit six percent uh monero you know it's slowly climbing back to its previous glory doing its thing i'm, I'm proud to see that happen uh, what else do we have theta network doing pretty good 15 percent 63 percent in the last seven days good move for theta congrats on uh, any theater ho holders you know uh, for me theater and i you know i kind of ended my relationship earlier on it hasn't been doing much um in the last little while so i kind of ignored it 
and boy do i regret it 63 percent to the upside and seven days that's a great move never mind uh let's continue going down 40 percent for flare a bit of a retracement in the last little while but you know it does look negative of course but look at this it's 40 percent in seven days guys so you can't really uh, look at just the daily volume or the daily move right you look at the big picture if it's been climbing up significantly you could expect a bit of a dip every so often it's healthy so keep that in mind take some profits you know chill up a stop loss look at Gains finally waking up here guys up 50 percent in seven days beast of a project all of a sudden waking up guys we know there was a bunch of fud that brought the price down to severely undervalued video uh, uh, prices and then all of a sudden uh, you know the value is low you buy low and then you sell high that's the way we do it here so right now gala is moving up 31 uh, 21 percent for for 24 hours guys it's a bit dangerous to get into a fresh long but nonetheless congrats again gala doing great sandbox waking up a little bit and pepe is waking up these meme coins are moving 54 percent for pepe today 120 in this last seven days guys pepe is running good stuff on pepe never mind uh continue going down dydx is doing okay uh decentraland waking up a little bit with um sandbox we saw the the, the sandbox do pretty good guys generally speaking the overall market is still very strong we got to understand that yes pullbacks happen along the way and we're not even experiencing a major pullback right now so we got to understand that pullbacks happen bitcoin's taking its turn it's you know definitely moving to higher levels you know people are getting into bitcoin rather than to altcoins at the current moment because there's volatility there however as soon as people take capital on bitcoin i'm expecting ethereum to continue moving with a bit more strength taking back that dominance and then we'll see some of the money flow into the lower caps we'll keep a track of it of course tonight 7 30 eastern we'll take a look at bitcoin the ethereum price we'll take a look at the bitcoin dominance and of course i'm going to be taking requests so if you have any projects you're interested in you can feel free to make those requests tonight at 7 30 eastern let's move on guys i know you're here to talk about charts let's begin looking at bitcoin what's happening here bitcoin quick you know as a lead indicator guys it's telling us that people are still interested in crypto meaning that bitcoin is moving we're having prices move to higher levels it's going to get the the um the retail market interested this is what usually happens when we see bitcoin hit those higher levels that's when the retail comes in and that's where we really get those explosive moves but you can see that all coins are really really at, still at the bottom they're very undervalued in comparison to bitcoin while bitcoin is approaching its uh, previous highs some of these altcoins have yet to even break out their bottom consolidation let's talk about this in a little bit more detail here we basically um you know are, i'm anticipating bitcoin to potentially get its last rejection at best at 60k it could happen but really all-time highs is probably where it's going to go it's all probability based personally speaking i'm not interested in getting into a long on bitcoin i'd rather align myself and try to front run the altcoin season and pick the proper altcoins that are out, that are all gonna that are gonna outperform bitcoin because ultimately we've seen some really really healthy projects uh, projects outperform bitcoin in the last little while and i prefer to take the risk in that now we are invalidating the bearish divergence on the weekly you know a lot of people are talking about this divergence and i think really we're making these lower lows right here if you look at these two tops on the RSI, these two tops right here are almost going to get invalidated. They're almost, if Bitcoin keeps on going with this strength, all of a sudden we're going to see one of these, right? So um, if we see the momentum of the RSI, you know, pick up a little bit more, we're going to make a higher high here, which will invalidate this bearish divergence that's happening. Now, there could be other divergences. We look at this top, we look at this bottom. That's not a divergence. This divergence right here definitely happened, bearish divergence, but look where we are. Obviously, it's bottom of the range. We come down and follow through, but where we are at the current state, guys we're not repeating this again we're the divergence could be invalidated all of this is not divergent anymore as much as it as we like to expect so we got to really understand that you know bitcoin keeps on going to these levels all-time highs and price discovery bearish bearish divergences will get invalidated okay so the emas are looking good right now in fact i'm expecting bitcoin to hit its previous high obviously not financial advice guys i'm not getting into a fresh long right now as i always mentioned i'm looking for opportunities in the altcoin market and i'm here looking at the weekly because really there's nothing else to look at you know and the next level is at about 60k that's it if we break above 60k and still it's not even the biggest level of resistance if we get there it's a nice psychological number i guess and there's a little bit of a, a dip in volume that you know can be protected by the bears and if it does happen great we get a retracement we get some consolidation but it's likely to see all-time highs guys you know obviously no one has a crystal ball to tell you exactly it's just probability and from a statistical probability perspective i'd rather get into alts let's jump right into our weave our weave at the end of the day is in a primed zone 
for a breakout. You guys know that I'm not a breakout trader. It's not something that I'm really, really keen to get on. You know, a project that is testing previous highs, a project that could get rejected based on previous price action and all the other confluence that we can see. The volume gap has begun right at about $16.20. Anything above that is pretty much a dead zone. You can see that right here on the volume profile that you can see that the volume kind of dips down significantly. Now, as we enter this zone, we do have this last little hump that could act as resistance. It could. Again, statistical probability, but we're looking at the weekly here, guys. The weekly is finally getting overbought. And when we do get overbought, the overbought conditions in the RSI is the zone where we get the most explosive price action. So let's expect that this thing could continue to the upside. Now, as a breakout trader, you're buying tops. Let's be real about that. You know, a lot of breakout traders, you know, they don't really frame it that way. But the reality is that's the only way you're going to break out out of is out of previous price action. So that's basically what we're hoping on is that we break above this high and the volume that we have here, the top of the volume, the, the volume, we break out of these tops and get, get through the volume gap. So with that being said, I ask you this question, where are you going to put your stop loss? And that should help you understand what type of position size you should get into if you're bullish. Now, of course, a lot of us have different risk tolerance. You know, you might be willing to take a bit more risk based on many, many factors. And at this current moment, what I'm saying is, is if you were to get in right now, the only place where you could really invalidate your bullish thesis is all the way down here at $7. But really, it's down here at the previous low. Because we could come right back down, fall through this volume gap and hit the previous low and even get a few uh, liquidations, hit liquidity grabs at that level and then get a bounce and continue to the upside. But the way things are looking currently is it looks like it wants to break out. So where do we put our stop loss? Let's start with that. If we get in right now and put our stop loss underneath this consolidation, that's a 55% dip. If we put our stop loss below this previous low, that's an 80% dip. So we got to look at the worst case scenario. Are you willing to hold a 55% dip? Well, it all depends on your position size. Obviously, it's not even go with leverage because leverage obviously duplicates your position size, adds a level of risk because now you have a liquidation level. But let's not get into that right now. Hopefully, um, if you're getting into leverage, you know how to play the game. I'm just here to show you some statistical probability and the trade setup. Ultimately, if you're not willing to take a 55% dip um you have to be uh, understand this how much capital you're willing to get in like for example if you get in with a hundred dollars a 55 correct correction is only 55 dollars you know 55 percent uh, of a hundred dollars only 55 bucks it's not a big dip but if you start getting into the thousands you you know you're talking about 500 dollars 550 dollars what about 80 percent even more we're talking about you know pretty much blowing up the whole trade and for me that's a big deal so if you're going to get into a, a long position there's a couple things that you got to understand it's about risk management number one do you have any confirmations of this bullish breakout Yes, it broke horizontal. Is it getting much volume? Not, not significant. Do we wait for confirmations? The only confirmations that I can suggest as a breakout, and again, I'm not a breakout trader, but this is what I would be doing, is getting in with a small position right now. Understanding that the small position has to endure a 55% dip, if you feel, or an 80% dip, again, if it's within your tolerance. But ultimately, I would build that position over time and expect this to break out. Just hold on because, you know, ultimately, there's a there's a factor here that it may not retrace so if it breaks out and it could get that retracement get the back test getting the confirmation using the previous resistance as support right around this level as soon as you see the momentum on the four hour we're looking at the weekly right now okay we're looking for entries on the four hour we start looking for oversold conditions with nice bullish divergence you can build another position right into here who knows how low we're gonna go okay hopefully we hold the horizontal as support then upon the breakout again another after the bounce off that back test the breakout out of the structure of the previous high is where you could scale in a little bit more right around here and overall you're gonna look at your overall uh, overall dca strategy you're buying in right here a little bit you're buying in on the confirmation on the back test, and then you're buying on the other confirmation, which is continuation of make of trend, which is a higher high. Once you get the confirmed higher high, really what you're saying is we're making higher highs and higher lows, and the trend is your friend, and we're moving to the upside. The reality is, is that it could take literally take half your gains within the volume gap to build that position. You can see that you could get a bit of a, a bounce. You buy a little bit here, your average position would be at about $20, $20 and you know, really you're almost halfway through the gap really at this level at the breakout level at this level right here so you got to be very careful here you pay the, the the theory here is that you pay to get confirmations 
you pay by the opportunity lost and the opportunity lost is right here but a lot of traders are willing to pay why because risk is public enemy number one for a trader the more risk you take the more problematic it becomes in the long run you might be able to get into a trade at a breakout right here and it might rock it all in one shot great but if you do that more often and you do that frequently, it's not a sustainable strategy. And that's one of the bigger issues is to be sustainable in the long run as a trader using a strategy that, you know, basically converts profits more than losses. And that's really what you want to do. Okay, we're here to make profits. So risk management as a breakout trader, that's what I would be looking for and building a position right into here, waiting for all those confirmations. Now, if you look at the weekly, we're overbought. The daily is looking great. A weekly overbought means the daily will stay overbought for a bit longer. And you can see that we've already in that territory trying to break above. The MACD is looking great. Let me get this a bit bigger so we can kind of analyze this a bit more. You can see the EMAs are facing up green histogram bars to the upside and we're still in overbought conditions on the RSI. So meaning that it's very possible that we continue breaking out i do like this little volume that we're building here and we gotta also admit there's tons of volume market participation that happened in the zone that uh, people accumulated and are uh, basically anticipating a breakout there there's enough strength to break out of some resistance and this resistance to be honest is not the biggest resistance look at the volume very low very low all right so right now we're overbought we could stay in this overbought condition on the rsi and continue to the upside and the four hour is getting divergence this is the issue here is that when you're getting into really bullish trends that we've been seeing in the last little while here on the altcoin market and crypto in general we, we invalidate bearish divergences higher highs on the price action lower highs on the rsi very typical the macd right now and I'll, I'll get into more details there in a second the macd you know is it a bit indecisive in my book it's looking bullish emas are still facing up green instagram bars are still there it's likely to stay maintain bullish until otherwise until we get a confirmation an ema cross to the downside and maybe one little red histogram bar usually gives me enough confirmation to suggest that we're coming down but we can invalidate the uh, the divergence on this rsi by making a higher high on the rsi basically by making this trend line do something like this come literally explode to the upside and literally invalidate now we could also even make a lower high right we can get a bounce and come here make a lower high and then come right back down here okay and that would still be a bearish divergence but we've seen three four sometimes four rarely four most often two sometimes three three drives of bearish divergence and really what that means that we can get three pops to the upside while still maintaining a downwards trend and momentum on the RSI. So that's why you gotta be very careful and find other levels of confluence alongside the divergences. And usually resistance. Resist resistance and support levels are great especially horizontals not so much diagonals and we see the macd looking a bit indecisive slightly bullish to that matter but nonetheless okay so if we look back into the daily are you expecting a bull a bullish breakout well if we do continue breaking out here the divergence on the lower time frames that we identified on the four hour are going to get invalidated and ultimately when that happens it's a huge confirmation that we're ready to explode and run to the upside and 28 29 dollars is my bullish price target here where i would be de-risking trailing up stop losses taking profit off the table i guess what i mean here is are you a breakout trader number one and number two how much risk are you really to endure to get into this breakout trade to the upside guys if i've offered you any value here on this channel on this video do the channel a massive favor slap the like button i'm going to be live tonight at 7 30 eastern talking about crypto news and price action so if you have any projects you want me to cover that's a great time and place to make those requests guys join that discord the discord is where it's at lots of good alpha trade setups fun fundamentals and learning material take care guys have a good one and don't forget buy the dip